What is up, Buff Nation? Welcome into DMVR Buffs Prime Time. We're presented by Illegal Pete's, everyone's go to spot for burritos, buddies, and beers. Jake Schwanitz, Andre Simone today. Welcome That's back, right. man. Man, I loved your endorsement on uh, the pregame show of uh, Pete's, you know, just waiting in line saying I could eat this shit all day. I mean, what, what more do you have to hear, you know? Guess what I had for lunch yesterday? Pete's. I was with you. Oh, yeah, you were there? That's right. <laughs> He remembers what he ate. He doesn't remember the company. <laughs> yes, that's a long okay. Day. <laughs> what what a long day. I know. I know. Um, real quick though, off the top, guys, if you've been waiting for the opportunity to buy some DNVR merch, now is the time. We are doing buy one get one half off yes, on all shirts sir. and hats, starting today through June eighteenth. It's technically our Father's Day um, deal, but. Take advantage of this. Get yourself the SCO shirt. Get yourself the primetime shirt. That's right. Uh, the Nuggets run. You can get the DMBR hat I wear every day. Yeah. All that stuff. All the great Broncos gear as we get ready for that. You yep. could uh, troll someone and buy them Rams gear. Do whatever <laughs> your heart pleases. Um, it's an amazing deal. We have the best merch for a Denver sports fan. I can say that unequivocally and... Uh, know that that is absolutely true it's the bomb so this is an amazing deal take advantage of it while you can uh ryan's working today he's not actually twerking is he though come on is, oh i don't know i don't know how hard he went last night <laughs> you were there i was there yeah he was rooting hard for like i don't pay attention to what people drink i'm i'm a ball ball knower you know? that's right you're in. focused on the game the game yeah. exactly people are taking videos of me i don't care you know i'm i'm just watching the game you had a great gif if i search dmvr yeah. andre is that gonna pop up on twitter i don't know i don't know i hope so I don't know. maybe <laughs> uh yesterday well off media posted a fire video andre they're working man they are working. Some working and dancing, some just working. <laughs> That's true. Huh. That's um, a distinction we've got going on. But we heard from Coach Sal right off the top, our guy. Um, a hilarious moment telling oh uh, defensive lineman, got to run your ass to the ball, and Coach Prime is saying what he said, but I can't say all that. <laughs> <laughs> that was so great. Uh, the big takeaway, though, Coach Sal asking for two to three defensive linemen. I think someone brought this up yesterday. Uh, this video went live when we were live. So they were letting us know in the comments, but we caught up. Yeah. Um, you got any inklings of what what tier of athlete they might find to fill that position? We'll see. We'll see what happened in the camp. And then this stuff we're watching right now is probably the, the big takeaway. You love a good one-on-one, -on -one, so I cannot wait to hear your full breakdown on this. I mean... That's, <laughs> that's the clip that has everyone... Uh, Buzzing. Yep. Uh, the size and speed is obvious. This is Javon Antonio, by the way, former Northwestern State wide receiver. He's coming in. And you guys were right, man. You guys were right telling me he's probably going to start, blah, blah, blah. He's going to play. And from what that shows, he's going to play a lot. What were his stats like at Northwestern State? They were okay. Um, I'm ballparking here. It was like 65 catches, 680 yards, and six touch six touchdowns. Okay, six 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 guy. <laughs> he did play for the Demons. Oh my gosh, Herm <laughs> Edwards would not like that. <laughs> Do you remember uh, that? <laughs> <laughs> no. When his like first press conference as the ASU coach, and oh, someone God. asks him a question from like you know the Arizona Devil or something, and he was like. The devil. Oh, I don't mess with the devil. It's like, <laughs> coach, you're coaching the Sun, Sun Devils, Devils right now. Let's get with it. <laughs> 64 catches, 684 yards, and six touchdowns. Well, um, okay. obviously. I mean, big fan. He looks insane. The strength off the line is it pops off the screen. Nuts. You can go deep. He's going to be a big play machine. That's the thing. The speed and separation really stood out in those one on ones because. That's the one that's very gifable, you know, you just right. like bullies. Like, but there's the other one where he's just like takes this out route and just like separates every step of the way. He's just creating more and more separation. He kind of like has to slow down for the ball and then keeps going. It was uh, just incredible. 
So James with the comment there, I don't know if it was Trevor Woods. He's saying it was your guy, Ben <laughs> Finneseth out there. <laughs> Even I was like, is that is that Finneseth? Am I, am I talking Finneseth on the show yesterday? Then I talked to you. I was pretty sure it was Woods. That's what I thought too, but I don't know. It's to- We're back in the the March and April or March and February phase where we don't really know who's running out there, except Damn for it. a few guys. We have I to know. relearn faces and names and all that stuff. Right, right, right. We learned them. We learned what they look like with helmets. Now we need to learn what relearn what they look like without helmets. <laughs> right. Monty says that was Finneseth as well. So, dude, um, uh, first off, Finneseth ended Zico's Power Five career. <laughs> that was like three practices done, <laughs> and um, yeah, now he's doing this like. Uh, is Finneseth earned a Scully? Maybe. We'll see. Scully time for the Colorado <laughs> kid? I can't remember if he's a Colorado kid or like California by the boy. Um, I'll look it up while I tell while we talk about the next guy. Yeah. Oh, Marion Miller, the four star wide receiver. We saw Adam Hopkins out there. Yeah. Running routes and catching balls as well. Yep. But oh Marion Miller, uh Alyssa, that other clip, there it is. Or that's um here we go. There you go. I mean, I don't. We, we'll get into the depth chart. Uh, In a sack. That doesn't look like a freshman right there. <laughs> okay. I thought that was Travis. No, I think that's O'Marion Miller. That's how insane that is. I know. Yep. Yeah, and he's being featured more in these uh, videos. Mm-hmm. Um, they just have so much, and now you know we're seeing more Weaver. It's uh, I don't know how they're gonna feed all these mouths. That's my only concern. I know how they're gonna run ninety-five plays a game. <laughs> well, that's true. That's for sure true. Um, and then I mean, like again, like Travis is gonna factor in. Dylan Edwards is gonna factor in. Mm-hmm. This receiver room is, whew. it's something. Yeah. Those one-on-ones were crazy, though. Uh, any other standouts? I think that's it. Um, I mentioned Adam Hopkins. We saw him kind of running routes and stuff, too. Yeah. It was um, a great, I don't know, three-minute cut-up of one-on-ones. Favorite content from Well Off. So. Yeah, really competitive. Um, ben like Finneseth from that. Durango, Colorado. Oh, my God. <laughs> the best, man. Um, um, anything else? Well, shit. I can't remember who I wa- who was looking good in coverage. Oh, uh, I think it was a Marion Cooper. A Marion Cooper. Yep. Yep. Yep, um, yep. 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 I mean, we saw a lot of guys out there. It looked like it was more an emphasis on the new guys. I'm sure some of the old guys were there, but we've seen quite a lot of them already. So Bucky's uh, a massive emphasis on the new guys. Yep. Really getting feature. Well, and I love the video where they're doing their, you know, their medicals and stuff was that the pregame show though all the new guys doing their medicals and what have you that was from like a week ago and there i might have been it, i think it was bucky and he's introducing everyone and putting their like uh oh when coach prime came in when they were like in the training room yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. so that was Put travis J. out there that was travis J. omarion cooper and Derek mcclendon three florida state guys yeah not bad not bad at all the last part of this video Andre Risen coming to Boulder, one of the greatest wide receivers of all time. Uh, we saw in the video. They're kind of talking like he's the greatest. I was they, like, uh, I, don't, I don't know, guy. Like, I know all about Andre Risen because maybe you guys don't know this at home, but I have a running Andre rankings. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you got to see where you fit into the world. That's true. You know, like, am I, how far from Agassi am I right now? Right, like, can right. I still aspire to be better than the giant? Yep. Um, how much richer is Dr. Dre than me? All these things, you know, we want to line up. So I'm well aware of Andre Risen, certainly mm-hmm. up there. As far as, Wide receivers named Andre, though? I don't think he's even higher than Andre Johnson. So we got to pump the brakes a little bit. He's As far as the greatest Andres, he's right there on the verge of top 10. As far as greatest wide receivers named Andre, he's behind Andre Johnson. So Andre Risen, please pay some respect. Well, where's Andre Reed? Up there. Up there. Yeah. Risen Reed. I mean, it's going right. to be pretty competitive. And then where's Andre Simone on the uh, Andre rankings right now? Well, I don't feature on the wide receiver rankings. <laughs> if Are Ryan, you sure about that? If Ryzen is just on the verge of the top 10, I'm like, I'm stiff in top 25, I think. You're ranked. 
I'm ranked. It's my rankings. So yeah, <laughs> there might be a, you know a conflict. There might of be interest. a little bias there. Yeah, for sure. For um, sure. <laughs> it's self-serving. I, mean, I don't claim it isn't. That's all right. We'll take it. Yeah. All right. Some recruiting news. Is that all you have on Andre Ryzen? Love the oh, shades. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot we were talking I'm about. I'm sorry, it. I took you on that <laughs> two minute tangent. Um, it's just awesome to see these former Dude. NFL players come in. I mean, he played with Coach Prime at Atlanta for a while when he first got in the league. Yeah. Both first got in the league, basically. The breaking down the play from the Super Bowl. Yeah, awesome. That was that great. I love. Yep. And then talking about you know their conversations before that, and like I know Andre is gonna ball out, and mm-hmm. like calling him up the day before the game and all that. I mean, that was really cool. And just, it's across the board. So much love, genuine respect, and admiration that Coach Prime has from his peers. Across the board. And it's so consistent. It almost It's nuts. What are the haters like? What are the legs they're standing on even? Like, the, I mean, it's it's like the Nuggets. Like you're just not paying attention. You're just not watching. Like you're a hater because you're just seeing things from afar and not taking time to go any deeper or really see what's behind any of this. Because if you did, then you'd see what's really going on. I mean, it takes five seconds. It to absolutely just does. Look up yeah. what he's been doing lately, and yeah. you'll learn immediately. Yeah, for sure. Um, whatever the haters are, the haters. Oh man, let them. We hate. love them. They fuel us. Yeah. Keep it, keep it coming. Okay, recruiting. Stacy Gage. We've talked about this guy quite a bit. Four-star 2024 running back from St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. In. <laughs> 5'11", 200 pounds. Put out a top five. Where's he ranked nationally? Uh, nationally, 225th overall, 17th overall running back in this upcoming not class. Bad, not bad. Um, he was, many people reported he was going to visit for the spring game. But I don't know if he actually came out or not. Uh-huh. Regardless, he had Colorado in like a top, who remembers anymore, top eight, top 10, top 12, take your pick, a few <laughs> weeks ago. Uh, he's narrowed it down to five. Oh, my gosh. He's narrowed it down to five. OU, Penn State, Florida, CU, and UCF. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. Huh. Um, he is set to announce his commitment. He set a commitment date too. June 10th, Saturday. Two days. Whoa. Yeah. Rockies takeover day he's announcing? Oh, shit. Oh, my God. He's overthrowing the Rockies takeover. Holy cow. Class of 24. 24. 24. 24. Which is the next class. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. He's going into a senior high school season. Yep. Wow. So that's the big one coming up. He just took an OV to UCF, he had an unofficial visit to Florida middle of April and unofficially visited Penn State the weekend before that. Mm. Um, this is where the confusion comes in. 247 Sports page lists all those visits. They don't have CU for the spring game, even though everyone, Adam, a ton of people reported it. So I don't know. Yeah, might be unofficial at this point. I Who knows? Set for the 10th, though. I mean... Been doing well with those Florida kids. Yep. Been doing real good. Yep. Teammate of Anthony Hankerson. Former teammate of Anthony Hankerson. And then you start thinking about that running back room. Speaking of the running back room, not to take a little detour here. uh, We talked about Saivion Wilkerson yesterday, the former JSU running back. People are saying they spotted him in a Reach the People video, and he hasn't said anything. Uh, Someone hit my DMs with a tip. (laughs) And I'm just going to say I'm changing my tune from yesterday. I think that might be him. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yep. It goes down in the DM. should be like a, <laughs> a segment for you guys, I think. It was a cool graphic. Like, and our goes down in the DMs tip of the day. <laughs> uh, shout out to everyone that hits the DMs. Absolutely. All right, next guy, Emery Winston. Would that create any? I'm a little worried about Cavassier, not to take a detour here. He's he's there. Okay, but I don't, we'll keep him happy even if we add more and more running backs. I think he signed on the dotted line. I think he's. I know, but 
I'm just saying, I've seen these guys sign and they're no longer here. You that's know? true. That's true. You know, Finneseth comes for us all. You never know. I- <laughs> And it's that straight ripping up <laughs> scollies out there, you know. So, um, who knows? We yeah. wouldn't we wouldn't put it by our guy. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Lawrence. <laughs> um, we wouldn't put it by our guy. Um, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Uh, right. and Emory right. Winston was visiting yesterday. This okay. is a 2025 four star tight end, 205th <laughs> overall in the class, eighth overall tight end. Like it from Calhoun High School in Calhoun, Georgia. Whoa. Yep. Dang, I wonder what Calhoun's like. Uh, six, one and a half, 235 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. He, I think it was an OV. Um, let me make sure on that. But he already has two crystal balls, both to Ohio State that were filed Jeez. on April 14th. But, again, this is a 2025 kid. We're 16, 18 months away from when he has to sign. Is he one of these tight end end athletes? <laughs> no. Oh, he's listed man. at... Um, I love those guys. He's just listed at tight end, not listed at athlete. Doesn't mention defense, but... Um, okay. I he, mean, another baller. Add another him to the one. mix. Um, Again, I, I don't want to spoil yeah. any depth chart talk, but... We'll get to it very tight soon. Tight end, you wonder, huh? You we wonder. wonder. Tight end. Um, it doesn't say whether it was an OV or not. Probably not since he's 25. Our guy Talon Chandler, um, 2024 offensive lineman recruit. Yeah. And commit, not even recruit. He's a commit. Get it right. He's getting on he's the. He's our guy. He is our guy. And he's, he's kind of a recruiting class leader, some might say, right? My guy. Yes, yeah. he is. Yeah. He's on his way here. Leader. He's got his OV this weekend. Okay. Do you know who else has an OV this weekend? No. The chat knows Charles Lester III. Do you know who that is? No. <laughs> it's a great name, though. <laughs> It's a great name. He is the second-ranked cornerback in the 2024 class, five-star player. He's on an OV this weekend as well. Oh, my gosh. Where from? Ooh, you got me there. I don't know. <laughs> um, but Ch- Tylen Chandler that's, said that's happened. he was going to be bringing his crew in hat specifically for our friend Charles from Dude. Venice, Florida. Town's the closer, man. He is the closer. He's, he's the, the secret closer. weapon. He's, he's the closer. You, you bring him in in the ninth, you're nursing a one-run <laughs> lead. It's talent time. Yep. Wow. Well, RIP to all the other schools in the running for for the five-star corner. It's over. It was FSU, Alabama, oh, and gosh. Georgia. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> then it's definitely over because those are the schools Coach Prime punks. Yep. Alabama, there's a little respect because of the Aflac of commercials. Course. but. Maybe some respect for Georgia, too. Can't knock the national champs. Ugh, I guess. I mean, they're Georgia, bro. Fine, fine. <laughs> Go dogs, I suppose. Go All right. dogs. Last thing before we hit break here. Yeah. Uh, this came out yesterday. Yes. Arizona's president was talking about realignment, Pac-12 media deal, and the Big 12. A lot of interesting things said. Uh, we report, or we didn't report. Someone else reported yesterday, and we talked about it. Yeah, yeah. That the Pac-12 has come to an agreement on their grant of rights, but that kind of means nothing without a media deal in place. So yeah, they've set the parameters in place for a rights deal if and when a number they deem acceptable comes across right. their desk, which is like you know. When you stack hypotheticals like that, you're spewing nonsense. That's an unserious deal right there. Yeah. So he spoke about the situation, uh, said, we have not seen a deal. If we see a working document that gives us numbers, that's what we don't have. Until we have it, nobody can make an informed decision. He said his prediction for the Pac-12 is we're all going to stay together. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, he talked about Brent Yormack and the Big 12 and how they're trying to be aggressive. He said he's aggressive. He has big plans for the Big 12. I wish him well. All 10 of us are focused on the media rights deal. Speaking about the Pac-12. Um, <laughs> what else do we have here? So he spoke about the Big 10 deal also. He said, we're not going to get a Big 10 deal. We're not going to get an SEC deal. But if we finish third in the sweepstakes, 
I never thought that winning the bronze medal was a great aspirational goal, but if we win a bronze medal, I think we'd all declare victory. I think the bronze medal's already been given out. Oh, they're down so bad. The Big 12's media deal is going to be tough to top, I think. It's over. It's done and dusted. Like, they've run out of bidders. They've run out of bidders. And honestly, this is kind of a terrible time to be hunting a media deal. Oh, it's atrocious. When you're in this kind of flux and instability, like, they are... They're, they're down so bad. And all you can do now is put on a brave face and say we're committed to the best deal and this and that. But what, what can you say? That's, Until you're out of the conference, you have no other option. Exactly. You know? That's the thing. What it's are, all you can say. And I think Rick George said enough when he spoke to Brian Howell a few weeks ago, basically saying that we'd like to stay in the Pac-12, but at the end of the day, we got to do what's best for Colorado. For sure, man. So... I don't know. It's, as you said, what else can they say? And we still have no media deal. Yeah. And, and the, the offers on the table have been nowhere close to bronze medal deals. Tell me the CW doesn't get it done for you? No live golf anymore, right? <laughs> Dude. Come on. Dude. I mean, because everything's so under what they're expecting per school. Ion TV? Yeah. yeah Ever exactly. heard of it? Yeah, come on. I <laughs> haven't. <clears throat> I don't I don't know that <clears throat> there's a G5 conference who's getting like underplayed, undervalued at this level right now. Yeah. It's horrendous. Well, no And what he says about the Big 12 I think is the most telling thing of all. Right. Right, and just spewing basically coach speak like yeah. Generic mumbo jumbo putting on a brave face for the Pac-12. Talking about how the Big 12 is being aggressive and mentioning that, I think, says everything. Mm -hmm. it says we're looking at what they're doing and we're we're intrigued. We're impressed. Yeah. They're not sitting on their hands. They're not getting some laughable offers. They are actually being aggressive and pursuing some really interesting and intriguing things. Yeah, the latest news is that, I mean, they've been going after UConn. UConn and Gonzaga, lots and, of buzz the last few days. Well, they were saying basketball only, but it looks right. like UConn's being upgraded to potentially a full member if they get an invite. You'll take the auto win in football every year, right? Why not? And it builds the best basketball conference in the country. No. No I doubt. Mean, adding Cincy, <clears throat> Gonzaga, and UConn. And Houston, too. And Houston, thank you. To what that Big 12 conference already was is insane. And potentially Colorado now with Cody right, Williams. Right. And you are you are replacing Texas and Oklahoma two to fourfold with that. You know? Right. Those are good basketball programs. At least two of those four programs you've added are better. Mm -hmm. And the other two have like potential to be national contenders year in, year out. Houston was the number one team for a ton of weeks last year those additions give you such a different geographic foothold while still keeping you in houston yeah. the biggest metro area in that you know southwest uh texas oklahoma panhandle right. area mm -hmm. you know which you're kind of losing but you're still going to have oklahoma state you're obviously going to have all those texas schools too and in houston to me is huge getting in cincinnati is huge i mean ohio is kind of the heart of midwest big 10 recruiting obviously usf you get into florida it's just going to feel like more of a national UCF. Con ucf sorry is going to feel like more of a national conference and i don't you know miss me with any travel drama like now we're paying the kids the fucking planes are great like <laughs> do it do it uh stay tuned man well i'm sure we got more big 12 stuff coming down the pipeline or pac 12 stuff coming down the pipeline what is the first shoe to drop? We've done this before. We need a we need a media deal. <laughs> we, the schools who are leaving or want to potentially leave need to see a media deal. The schools who are going to stay need a media deal to find out if they're going to be on like national TV next year. You need to at least see your either or. Yes. Yeah. So it's just a. It's, is it ever coming though? Like. I, I don't know. It feels we like four months ago we said, like, you know, 
this is where the deadline's got to be if it goes past this. They've we're said that apart. multiple times. To- we're a few weeks away. Weeks go by. We're a few weeks away. So, And without pressing deadlines, these big money deals do not get pushed through. Mm-hmm. Negotiations, like deadlines are everything. You crazy, got a, crazy, crazy, crazy. You got a handy remote controller there. For, uh, sure do. Our beautiful buff neon sign. Look at that. Saturday Neon. The company started by two friends and former college roommates at CU. Look at that. They make officially licensed collegiate logo LED signs. They're based in Denver. What a beauty. Um, they'll ship to you wherever you may need, with everything you may need, to mount, power, and dim your sign. Yeah. Officially licensed for 19 select schools, including Colorado, Arizona, Bama, Wisconsin, Auburn, and others. You can go to SaturdayNeon.com and use the code DMVR. You'll get 10% off your order today. And you also get free shipping for orders over $200. And then shout out to Shador's number two. Have you had Shador's number two yet? Good stuff, man. It's amazing. I actually got a grill for my birthday. I should. Wow, congrats. Thank you. It's Thank a big you. dad like promotion right there. Yeah. Kate's mentioned multiple times that it's my birthday and Father's Day mm, gift. One of those. Yesterday I had to say like, <laughs> no, I heard you the first time. I got it. <laughs> um, I'm actually a coal man myself, but it's a gas grill. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Whatever. Everyone's happy now. Um, so no, I, I, I got to get me some to, to grill some stuff up. Love that. Um, it is grilling season. Make sure you have Shador's on Boy, hand. It goes great on absolutely everything. And if you go to plbse.com, you can use the code all city, all caps, all one word at checkout, and you'll get 10% off your order Shador's number two, or just scan that QR code on the screen there. Yeah, support your guy. All right. Um, let's hit this before we get to roster projections real quick. Our yeah. guy, Big Game Boomer, put out another graphic. Love that. Top 50 offensive coordinators entering the 2023 season. Sean Lewis made the cut. Beautiful. 13th. Crazy. Do you know who number one is? Lucky number 13. Best OC in the country. It's uh, Lincoln Riley's bro bro at TCU. Well done. At Clemson now. Right. Right. Yep. Ha. Sharon, That's crazy, huh? Sharon Moore at Michigan, number two. Ryan Grubb at Washington, number three. Mm-hmm. Alex Atkins at Florida State, number four. Phil Longo, Wisconsin, five. After that, Will Stein, Oregon. Jeff Lebby, OU. Casey Woods, SMU. Andy Ludwig, Utah. A lot of Pac-12 representation. No uh, kidding. Cal's OC gets called in here. Cal. Cal. It's crazy. I uh, literally watched the Buffs beat him last year. Yes. Buffs were bad. <laughs> they were pretty bad. Uh, Arizona's OC, Brennan Carroll's on here. Who else do we got? Wow. A ton um, of new blood. A ton of new blood. Tom, I mean, not one of those names would have been on that exact list two off seasons. Bobby Petrino is up there from um, OC at a m now. Bobby P. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Wow. Do you remember Colin Klein? Yeah, the Colorado kid, quarterback at Kansas State, Heisman finalist. He's K-State's offensive coordinator now. Of course he is. Um, what a season they had. Yep. Justin's guys. Yes, exactly. Who else do we got on here? That's about it. UCF made the cut. Uh, Tommy Reese at Alabama, 49th. Very little SEC representation on that list. But I guess, you know, you lose Todd Munkin. Alabama, Auburn at 43, uh, Missouri at 31, Florida at 33, Texas, are we counting Texas as SEC yet? Count them. 27th. Um, if you want to count them, then count their ass. <laughs> <laughs> Arkansas at 19. So. Not bad. All right. I put out. It's going to be a fun offensive season for the pack. It's going to be a great offensive season for the pack. Great and for way CU. to go out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. Um, I put out a beast of an article on the website you did. yesterday. You did. Graphics, names, lists, the whole shebang. Yep. Good good stuff. Go to thedmvr.com. One of the top stories up there right now. Projecting Colorado's depth chart, Deion Coach Prime Sanders has built the buffs in his image. So last week on Friday, we did projected starters for offense and defense. Yep. I took that a step further, and I went the whole damn depth chart. It's great. 
I really don't think there's a resource this good anywhere online. Thanks, man. Buff Nation needed it, so thank you. Thank you to production, our great yep. graphic department, for getting that nifty, beautiful, free unlock story. TheDMVR.com. I think it's still the top story on the homepage right now. Check Let's that go. out. Great work from our guy. So um, I'm updating the graphics, actually, after this show. So there's wow. some slight mistakes. Oh, my gosh. Um but it's all the starters. So if you have the starters graphic, Alyssa, let's do offense first. So we put this out on Friday. This is all the offensive starters. Um, what position, I guess, when you read this was like the most intriguing, do you think? I mean, to some extent, it's kind of tight end because mm. that feels wide open. Yep. I mean... You're in on Passarello. Mm -hmm. I think what I, you know, the little bit I saw at practice from Olsen and how they use them is intriguing. And uh, Faria, Caleb's really interesting. Yep. So, and I also think it's wide open and probably the weakest spot on that offense right now on paper. 100%. Um, I wrote, if they played a game tomorrow, Louis Passarello is your starting tight end. I mean... That's pretty clear. Earned his number in camp. Right. Or right. in uh, spring practice. Yeah. Coach Brews spoken well about him. Exactly. Yeah. So, but behind him, you have Elijah Yelverton, too. Uh, right. Former Iowa tight end who came in, I believe, as a walk on. Yeah. You mentioned him as a sleeper in that. I put him second on the depth chart right behind him. And I wouldn't be surprised if him, Caleb Faria, or Eric Olson end up as the starter. It was wide open. Yep. Yeah. And that's the order. It goes Passarella, Yelverton, Faria, Olsen. Um, I saw someone ask about backup quarterback. I just put Ryan Staub. Um, he was here during the spring. Colton Allen was here also. But, of course, Staub, the highly t higher touted recruit, three-star kid coming in. Yeah. Uh, a little – needs to add some to his frame. He's still a small kid. He's a kid still, just coming yeah, yeah, from yeah. high school. Yeah. But um, in the – and Jesus, knock on wood – the situation Shador is not on the field. I think no, it's no, Staub no, no. at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that was stark when seeing the practices was the drop-off from the ones yep. to the twos, especially behind center. Yep. Um, what else do we have here? Well, who you? the slot was also intriguing to me, that slot wide out spot, um, so, which is going to be so interchangeable in a lot of ways. I love that that's right. where you have Dylan featured in here. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got him at running back and wide receiver, but behind Jimmy, got Willie Gaines in that mix, Dylan, obviously, and Dawson. Yep. So I guess you can call it slot. I just kind of, the archetype I built it under was like speed. Okay. Uh, because, you know, you think about Sean Lewis's offense, they obviously want to go fast, but yeah. they brought in a lot of guys with 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, speed, 4-3 speed potentially. Burners. Um and I think they keep that heavy rotation going to really just keep up the minimum speed offensively. You know what I mean? Just yeah, to yeah, keep yeah. fresh legs coming in. So I went Jimmy Horn, Willie Gaines, Tarvarsh Dawson, Dylan Edwards for that position. It's an intriguing one. I honestly think like there's going to be so much competition. I was so high on Jimmy two, three months ago. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm less high. Right. But he feels like of all the guys we have like penciled in as kind of like surefire starters, he feels like one of those guys who's going to have to work the hardest to get all his touches, all his reps. And I mean, of course, the beauty of Jimmy is you can use him in the return game. You can give him direct runs on sweeps and what have you. Like he's a really, he's an important factor, skill position player who's not just tied to like, being your speed wide out right. or being your slot wide out. He can literally contribute to this football team in a multitude of ways and formations and alignments. And he's so fast. He needs two yeah. or three catches, yeah. and the guy probably yeah. has yeah. 100 plus yards and a touchdown. So, yeah. Um, sure. Let's switch sides then, real quick. Defensive side of the ball. I, I heard it about the safety again. <laughs> I heard it about it on uh, Friday when we put this out. Um, people did not like that I had Trevor Woods there. Everyone's upset that I've got Vito Tisdale, Miles Slusher, third string. Here's the thing. We talk about and <laughs> You've been getting you've been getting roasted for your safety 
takes for a minute, huh? I can't. I all can't win season, though. All it's too deep, guys. It's That's too what I'm deep, saying. And there is all the other positions. There's at least pedigree wise or previous college production wise. There's some separation, right? Safeties, man, it's like pick your poison. That's very hard to separate that deep loaded safety room. So, I, okay, I, I'll give you props, my guy. You you deserve. It. And also, I mean, just with how many safeties they have. Also, Trevor Woods got his number like really early. Yeah, he's a returning starter. I know. Power five school, tons of experience, has looked good in these videos. Yes. Um, Travis J, we saw in Well Off a few weeks ago that video when he was in the training room with Coach Prime. Yeah. Big brace on his leg. I don't know if this guy's going to be able to play in That's two and other. a half months. That's the other thing. Back um, seven is so unknown right now. Right. And then, look, I mean, they have so many safeties. They can play multiple safeties. And they've got guys that fit multiple roles. They're going to. Because they, they're they are gonna going to feature five yes. DBs a ton of the time. Yes. Those 5 DB alignments will be plenty of three safety looks. Mm -hmm. And that's where a guy like Woods does factor in closer to the box, line of scrimmage, almost like a default linebacker, but who has some of those safety cover skills. It's where a guy like Finneseth may factor in. I mean, he's not even... That's Denny, so right, right. I'm not, I'm not dragging you on Twitter, you know? Right. We all know, we all know. <laughs> Finneseth is straight up ending people's scollies, you know? So we get it, we get it. It's a Forcing deep kids room. out. It's a deep room, absolutely. Um, but I mean, guys like Trevor Woods, Cameron Silman, Craig, Shiloh even, like... I know. These guys thump, man, and they could probably slide down to the box, play in the slot, and then you could throw in a Vito Tisdale or Roderick Ward. or It's going to be a heavy rotation. Totally. So slusher even. Sl slusher. I'm high on slusher. I mean, he's one of those guys like Ty Alston. He committed so early, he's almost kind of getting forgotten because yep. so many yep. other guys have committed. Totally, man. Um, the other standout to me here when doing this was cornerback. I think you have five really good ones. Travis Hunter, Cormani McLean, O'Marion Cooper, who we have starting right there. Behind them, Jaquez Robinson and then Kendrick Breedlove. Right. After right. that, it's it gets thin really, really quickly. You have Carter Stoutmeyer, the recruit coming in. But after that, it's a handful of walk-on guys. That's why that safety depth is so important. Yes. That's why that safety depth is so important. Because I do think these sub-packages really should be on the heavier side. Mm-hmm. Like more often than not, it's going to skew more three safeties than it is three corners. For sure. Um, and that, that's kind of the only way you're going to work it to stretch this out. Because five corners is not. It's not enough. That's thin, man. Oh, and your best corner plays both ways. I mean, 12 games in the Pac-12, that's going to be like mm -hmm. the bare minimum. Yeah. The bare minimum. Uh, one note I, I'll add on the uh, edge on the depth chart. I just miss Savelle Smalls. Um, it's it was gonna happen. <laughs> There's so many players, and um, where would you have put him? I'd replace him with Tajay McCoy, but at the same time, it's the same thing. They're gonna rotate these edge guys a ton, and he fits that. Oh, it's super deep. He fits the mold of the Jordan Dominics of Derek McClendon and Ty Jalston. A bigger edge, um, of course, a pure athlete, but not as small. I don't even want to say small. Um, bigger than. Jeremiah Brown and D.V. Harris, who project to be more of like your speed rushers or guys who could uh, drop into coverage and just help out, kind of be a, you know, Swiss Army knife. D.V. is really an interesting uh, move piece. Yeah. I mean, as is J.B. And then, did I just miss it? Or is this the most Leonard Payne love I've seen in a minute? Another guy that kind of feels like, gosh, he transferred so long ago. It's easy to forget, Payne. We've had we had him slotted in at starter when we did yeah. original projected starters. No, because um, I like him, man. He's biggest body on the D line. And when you watch that stuff at Fresno, there's uh, beyond the nastiness. There's there's some length and deceptive like ability to penetrate and get in there. I mean, he doesn't have to really like penetrate and get sacks though. No, this guy he is doesn't. a big like he doesn't. Hold the point of attack, maybe have him two gap a bit and you know, stop some runs before they get five plus yards downfield. They have no options as a like true nose or zero tech. 
Not really. Yeah. Um, I mean, which Len- is fine. I mean, it's just that just helps me gauge what kind of right. defense we'll be running. You so know? Leonard Payne, Shane Cox, Chaz Wallace, all about 6'2", 290, 300-ish. Leonard Payne is a bit bigger. I think he's 3'10". Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, so Payne is probably, if you had to line up a one technique or a zero, he's probably going to be that for you. Right. Well, and they had that, and they let him go. Right. Well, so it just tells you what kind of defense they want to run. Exactly. You know? um, They're and, one gap, and I can tell you that. Much. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, Shane Cokes and Chaz Wall. So, I mean, you can kind of just line them up wherever on the line. And we've talked about, you know, potential NASCAR fronts with this team, too. Where, oh. I mean, imagine a front where Shane Cokes is your guy uh, hanging, shading the center. And then you got Jordan Dominic, Ty Jalston, totally. and uh, Derek McClendon as your yeah. uh, kind of down lineman. Well, McClendon's got a little more size. Dominic has length for days. I'm guessing he's the longest of any D, D lineman they have on the team right now. I I guess so, yeah. I, legit, I think it's pretty like close. Six, so. five, and I, I bet you that guy comes in at least at 34-inch arms. Ty Jolson is a big dude as well. He has We haven't seen him on the field. He's been battling through an injury this spring, or last spring, this spring. Well, that's the thing that intrigues me, man. Is that the the edges feel interchangeable as well, right? Yep. Like McClendon's got a little more beef than your typical edge. Mm-hmm. Dominic's a very long guy. Alston's got some stuff yep. to him. And then you you can balance those guys out with the D V Harris's, with the Jeremiah Browns, the guys who are more of your move like exactly. benders, just go out speed guys, you know. Um, um scroll up a little bit, Alyssa. Lobster Mac brought up Bishop Thomas. I kind of called my shot here. I put him um, Saw that on, the same, Shane Cooks, yeah, yeah. on the same level as Chaz Wallace, too. Right. And I think he, right. I mean, we've talked a lot about him. We watched his highlight tape. It was amazing. And I just think he's one of the guys who's going to take a big leap and could actually be a pretty good contributor for this team this year. Yeah, for sure. I'm seeing the chat talking about, you know, there's going to be a lot of rotation. You bet you're. Oh, I, yeah. Front seven, back seven. They're going to rotate. Heavy, and it all plays into, you know, if you're going to run um, Sean's offense, right, right? Mm-hmm. and you're going to be up-tempo and you're going to run a ton of plays, you better have the depth on defense to exactly. justify that, man. Because if not, you're just going to do a disservice to your own team. What Chip Kelly did when he first got to Philadelphia. I was just going to say, yeah. Chip Kelly, it was kind of his, his fatal flaw both at Oregon and then in the NFL. It right. certainly didn't translate. Was, yeah, you'd go so fast that sometimes you'd have a 15-second three and out on offense, and your defense is just busted. Yep. They're just bu- you just, like, burned them. Um, and they're not going to recuperate for three or four series for what you did to right. them there, you know? Yeah. So you need that well, depth. If you're not already losing by 10 right. points. Exactly. At that exactly. Point. <laughs> you need the depth. You need the interchangeability. Right. That's the other thing. You want to be high-flying, high-scoring and, you know, lots of exo- exotic subs and exactly. different formations up front. Well, you need the depth. You need the uh, personnel versatility variety to make that happen. We're seeing it come together. The depth chart on defense is really intriguing. It I is. Mean, I cannot wait to sit down on Saturdays, have my roster with the numbers on it, and just get into all these guys and everything they bring to the table and how they're being used on this defense. You know those buff film rooms this season are going to be oh, fire. magical. We might have to do like a little video series recapping those and talking about it. You know, on the, I mean, you could do that weekly on the pod. Okay, we're getting a little inside baseball here. Adam does the list in a video. I was going to bring it up. Why not? Okay. We'll, we'll, um, talk. we'll talk. We'll talk. Okay, we'll linebackers. A, we'll schedule a meeting with everyone. MLN, you keep on uh, throwing out Demo Kennedy. He's starting, man. I got him. I got you. He's there. He's starting at linebacker. Him and Levante Bentley. I threw Jeremiah Brown in that second string linebacker. Um, I mean, I threw him at second string edge too. Same thing. He's going to rotate. He's going to play a lot. It's going to be all over the field. Are him and Dylan um, the only two guys who are featured at multiple positions on your depth chart? I think so. I think so, yeah. The great guys to be like, yeah. totally. They kind of are like the the wild cards of offense and defense. Yeah. Um, that what do you hear said, about Demoy's health? Uh, Andre Hart was asked about him right like a few weeks before the spring game. He said he's coming along, um, and he I think we're expecting him to be ready. Okay, cool. Um, anyways, thank you, Wayne. <laughs> One last thing I'll say on this 
entire thing. And I, I tweeted this out. I almost, I did the depth chart. It's almost an injustice to this roster, though. They're going to be so versatile. They're going to be so multiple. They're going to have so many sub packages. Guys are going to be playing all over the field. I know. That a traditional depth chart just doesn't really do it justice. No, and I mean, obviously, you went with three deep to do your best to include as many as you could. Just doesn't. And there's still, like, there's more work to be done, right? Like, right. The, we have yet to see it, the final addition to this roster be made. Yes, exactly. Um, and you just went too deep on the O-line. We haven't even got into that, but you just got to see that evolve. It, there's so many unknown variables yeah. there that, I mean, so many guys coming in this uh, right now who could potentially make an impact and, you know, sway things. Fair to say you feel better about the left side being set of the line. The right side's the one that's more of a work in progress. We're figuring it out. I'd say so. I mean, Tyler Brown's a lock. I don't know if so anyone... he could be left, right. We don't, you know. Right. I, I think this. he's playing left, though. I think he said yeah, that's uh -huh. what he's playing. Yeah. Um, Which where he was playing at Jackson State last yes. year. Yes. And then uh, Gerard Christian Lichtenhan. I, no one has the size that he has. I mean, Savion's close, but... Um, you'd have to have a damn good player to justify leaving that size off the field, I think. Right. Well, and how you see everyone's developed in the uh, in the weight room. Right. If if Tank can just put on a little more weight below the belt, man. Yeah. You've got something. Yeah. You've got something. So funny enough, I put that out last night. I waited till after the Nuggets game was over to send it out, and then. Um, our guy, Bill Connolly, ESPN Plus, published the exact same article this morning. Friend of the program? I didn't know Bill was a, was a friend of the program. That's great. Shouts to you, Bill. Um, we cover his stuff all the time. But uh, he put out... It was. I woke up this morning and you know I'm checking my phone. And uh, literally, just like on Twitter, and this notification pops up from ESPN, like projecting Coach Prime's depth chart. I was like, what? I just wrote this. Um, Cliz <laughs> used to do that to me on Broncos articles. I really? thought it was funny. Yeah. Um, you know, great minds think alike. Not much has changed. What about Jalen Ellis as a projected <laughs> starting wide receiver? Jake, you didn't have that. This is, I mean, I wouldn't rule it out, I guess. He's Come super on, fast. Chad, get on him about the lack of Javon Antonio love. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just watched the videos of him and Omarion Miller. No doubt. No um, so, yeah, he had Jalen Ellis in there with Xavier Weaver and Jimmy Horn. Yeah. He had Eric Olsen as the starting tight end with Louis Passarello being the backup. My guy. Yeah. Eric's just lucky that in practice, he's lining up against the threes and Finiseth is ending Scullies <laughs> for the one and twos. So oh, that's why he's got the advantage. Um, his offensive line left to right, uh, Tank, Jack Bailey, Van Wells, Tyler Brown, switch the guards. Yep, switch the guards um, on, yeah. Savion Washington. So aside from switching, well, so it's the it's the Bailey starting guard spot that he's differing from you on. Right, yeah. And oh. I mentioned in the article he could absolutely start. I'm not mm -hmm. saying he's not going to start. Bailey's really nice on those poles, uh, mm -hmm. moving around, and that's where like having him on the left side. And when you see TB's tape at Jackson State... He's so powerful that he makes a ton of sense at right guard. Mm -hmm. He looks like he's slimmed down a lot. He is definitely chiseled out his frame. No shit. Yeah, he's been killing the weight room. No um, doubt. A lot of the same stuff, though. Uh, Jordan Dominic, Derek McClendon at edge. He also lists Ty Austin as a starter at edge. Right. That's Chaz Wallace, Leonard Payne, Shane Cox at DT. Um, he did have Brendan Gaunt at uh, linebacker over Demoy Kennedy. Which I do not agree with, but I could. He's going to play, so can't be mad at that. Levante Bentley, the other guy. There's just an unknown with Des Moines. It's just an unknown. So he's projecting. He just didn't. He kind of went with like an edge rotation. Yeah, not starting three edges. Right. Yeah. He didn't do like a pure starting eleven. Yeah. He yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Secondary, he's got Travis, Omarion Cooper, Trevor Marian, Woods. Man. He's a dog. No, he's he's look good. Yeah. Yeah. Also has T Woods. Oh my guy. He does have Cam. Oh my guy. 
And then uh, at Nickel... Shy, doesn't know about Shiloh. Shiloh sleeping? That's not good. We'll let him absorb that heat. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Miles Slusher at the Nickel for him, though. Love me some Slusher. Not going to hear complaints from me. Cooper over Cormani. That and surprise Jaqu you? And Jaquez. Scale of 1 to 10. 10 is shocked. Faint live on air. One is like, yeah, I totally saw this coming. This is what I predicted. How surprised would you would you be if Cooper was starting over Cormani? Let's say by like week four. Three? Really? I'd be slightly surprised. That is a three. You got yeah. that scale. You nailed it. <laughs> I nailed man. it. You Thanks. nailed it. Um, I think he's the first corner on the field uh, in, in my eyes. So I'd, I'd say Travis and Cormani are you two guys. I think he's the first corner on the field when Travis comes off. Mm, interesting. Okay. So, um, but he could just be starting outright. A lot of people right. in the comments saying Cormani won't be starting. All right. Uh, we're obviously going a bit long today. I met Cody Williams yesterday. The number one basketball recruit in the country. He's in Boulder. Big deal. Yep. Big uh, deal. I got to speak to him. Buffs NIL, uh, Buffs for Life NIL Collective had an event yesterday. Beautiful. Whole basketball team signing autographs for the kids after their basketball camp. Big TCU center there? Eddie Eddie was there. Yeah. They were, they were all there. Asan That's Diop awesome. was there. Courtney Anderson was That's there. Awesome, Everyone man. was there. Tristan? Tristan was there. Oh, no shit. Yep. Oh, that's amazing. Man. KJ was there. Said hey deal. to him. Javon uh, Hadley was there. Looks like he's recovering well from his injury. My goodness. Yep. Anyways, uh, I talked to Cody yesterday. Um, asked him basically why see you. Yeah. Said the biggest thing was just the uh, best fit for me as a program as far as play style goes. The strength program was really good, and that was kind of the cherry on top. I really like the coaches. Uh, they're genuine. Everyone's really well connected here. So that's why he decided. Uh, Tristan Da Silva had a quote not too long ago saying that this could be the best Pac 12 or the best Buffs team ever. And they basically are expecting yeah. like standards to win the Pac 12 this year. Um, so I asked Cody about that. He said, for us, our biggest challenge as far as last year, and I love this, he talked about last year and he said, our problem was consistency. That's beautiful. Um, we will go as far as we want to go in terms of how hard we work. As long as we stay consistent, work hard. I feel like we could really do anything, and we're obviously trying to get back into the tournament and win the Pac-12. I think we could do that. Just stay, just work hard and stay consistent. Um, he's been busy this summer. He had the McDonald's All-American Game, the Nike yeah. Hoop Summit. Right. He's got the U19. Um, yeah, men's basketball team, right for the World for America. Cup. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. He'll be Tad's one of the him. top players. Yep, Tad's coaching that uh, yeah. U eighteen team. Mm -hmm. oh, that's amazing. So that's coming up in July. I just that's asked him huge. about how busy his summer has been. He said, yeah, uh, "I mean, he was here the week he graduated high school. Uh, just right back to the grind. Not a ton of breaks." He said, "It's a nice problem to have, though. Not he's not complaining. He's just been enjoying the process." Um, yeah, next two summers for that kid are gonna be, like, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's the, it's the last summer of the rest of his life, literally, you know, like <laughs> pretty much, yeah, everything's happening right now. Um, when you're an elite hooper of that level, uh, Will asked him about his brother Jalen, Jalen mm -hmm. Williams, who, yeah, was right. outstanding is, rookie season with yes. the Thunder, yes, was in like the contention for rookie or in the vote for rookie of the year or something like Told, that. I mean. Paulo Banquero starts the season off on fire, and then Jalen kind of like closed that gap. There was some buzz of him being rookie of the year uh, by the end, like a, a mesmerizing rookie season mm -hmm. for him. And, you know, Chet Holmgren was the top guy the right. Thunder picked, but he's injured all year, right? So he yep. wasn't even expected to be this like superstar as a rookie, but he really had an amazing season. Uh, Will asked him if he's played him one-on-one -on -one recently. He uh -huh. said not in a while, not in a few years. <laughs> Oh, wow, um, that's crazy. He did say, though, I feel like if I can compete with him, I can compete against anybody. I'll say. He um, said, so I remember playing against him growing up, and he said he was holding his own back then. Uh, obviously, he was a lottery pick, and he thinks he can play just like him. He says it's a big motivator for him, trying to match up to his brother. Um, let me see what else we got. 
Asked him what he wanted to work on. His game this offseason talked about um, playing down low in the post, getting his weight up, getting stronger. Um, just talking about the strength program. Seems like yeah. that was a huge... No kidding. Huge factor for him, and I'm sorry I don't have his really name right now. Really sounds like that. Um, the strength coach for basketball, but... Uh, How exciting, man. Yeah. I mean, having him is going to be just something else. I've, I, If you're around, you better go catch some buffs hoops. Steve Englehart. Season. That's the strength and conditioning coach. Um, his title is Director of Strength and Conditioning for Olympic Sports at CU. Wow. Huh. Um, I've, I've heard many. I've only been here one year, obviously, one basketball season. I heard a lot of people talking about him being the reason why you know, Tristan kind of made the jump, like yeah, all kinds yeah. of stuff. Uh, what else do we got? Wow. I asked him about the finals. Incredible. Of course, this was yesterday afternoon, so this was before game right, three. Right, right. Um, and I said, and asked him if he had any takeaways from the first two games. He said, Yoke's a beast. He's going to get a triple-double every game. It's looking like Nuggets in six. Oh, my gosh. Ball knower. Wow. <laughs> wow. Confirmed. Colby Williams, ball knower. Wow. Incredible. Yep. Um, he talked That's about great. meeting a bunch of the other guys. He actually met a couple of the guys who transferred out. Um, so he's still trying to meet the whole team. Obviously, Eddie just came in, too. Um, what else do we got? I asked him, you know, of course, Bronny's at USC. The Pac-12 is littered with top recruits. Yeah. How he feels about that, if there's any pressure. And he said, um, anywhere you go in college, there's going to be good basketball players. You'll be playing the best of the best, especially like that when you get to Division One. Every player you play against was the best player on their high school team and were the go-to guy. So I've been playing like that my whole life. It's not really factoring. Um, it'll be more challenging physically, and he's got work to do in that department, but he's <laughs> saying he's prepared. Man. Doesn't feel any pressure. He's been playing against good players his whole life. Obsessive dedication again in that frame up. Yep. Wow. Love that. Uh, he was a great kid, man. I'm super excited for this team and to cover him. It's yeah. going to be a ton of fun. I mean, sounds really smart, really introspective, just like a worker, you know, yep. especially in basketball where it's like by 14, we kind of know who the tippy top guys globally are going to be. Right, right. To be that level of prospect that Cody is, you you have to be wired like that. It's a lot of the stuff you guys tell me about Travis. You yeah. Know? Yep. You just have to be wired to be like a worker and be, you know, be a pro. Right. A pro's mentality as a teenager. It's uh, super impressive. We'll be talking about him a lot as we move th forward and through the basketball season. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, long show today. Not going to apologize. It's been a banger. Been a lot of information. Not apologizing ever. Uh, take on the sun with, with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather. Heck Another yeah. beautiful day here in Denver. Yep. Not smoky. Um, clear outside. Shady Rays has strong frames, oh, extremely yeah. clear polarized optics. You can shop their entire collection at the Park Meadows Mall. You could find your yourself some shades that look a lot like the Andre Ryzen shades he was yeah. talking yesterday. <laughs> you can. I think so. Uh, exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code DMVR. You can get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses, and you can try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Also, shout out. To Bacchus and Shanker. Oh. All they do is win. <laughs> and I've been so doing true. so for more than 25 years. Best part about them, though, is no fees to speak with them about a case. No fees while they work on your case. No fees unless they win your case. Legends. Bacchus and Shanker are here for you. When you get hurt, they've won over $1 billion for their clients. Dang. They help with all kinds of injury cases where you weren't at fault. Car accidents, motorcycle, ride share, pedestrian, trucks. They can even help if you're injured at work. If you need the Sioux, smash the two, the Shador line. Two, 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 two. Get it. Backus and Shanker wins. Done. All right, long show. Do we have a hard out, Alyssa? Are we good? Uh, Brown says at 1.50. Okay. Uh, let's do some questions then. These guys, man, I come on the show. They just go super long. <laughs> they have such a blast talking to Dre. Oh, boy, huh? Just can't get enough. Always going long. Listen, it's not my fault. You've been here. <laughs> You've seen it. It's not my fault. It's their doing. Um, when's the show going to be a trio? I don't know. We need to do that soon, though. It's coming. It's coming. We'll figure it out. Don't you worry. I appreciate it, though. Yep. Erica says, first time live. Welcome in. Hey, Eric. Ka? Yeah. <laughs> 
Welcome. <laughs> Erica, come <laughs> on. I've um, never had more trouble reading the screen. I'm such an old man. It's <laughs> terrible. I'm not the worst uh, name pronunciator and reader on the show today, uh, which is amazing. No, 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 I'm like number one at the company by like a healthy margin. <laughs> is Jalen Ellis still coming, my he's friend? He's coming. I don't know if he's here yet. He's coming, though. Our friend Billy C. from ESPN Plus still <laughs> yeah. thinks so. Huh? so he's he's a, there you go. the conductor of the Jalen Ellis <laughs> hype train. Yeah. yeah. Um, scale of one to ten after being burnt by... Uh, Baylor transfer at wide receiver last oh, year. No. Do, how no. much do you hold that against Jalen Ellis? Uh, Jalen Ellis doesn't have a, a high bar to clear. Okay. There I'll you go. That. There you go. Good. All due respect. All due respect, indeed. Jays, uh, DMVR, don't y'all wish we had a week zero game? I'm so ready for the season. I wish we did. I know. What's the slate like week zero? We got to figure this week zero thing out, too. Like, There's some fun games I've seen. It's always like there's some, there's like nice matchups for the the sickos, you know. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. It's I'm gonna be watching like, Pitt Marshall or whatever yeah, the hell it is. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right, Rex, how many scholarships do we have left? By my count, it's five or five or six. I don't have oh my, my gosh. document pulled up right now. What are they going to do with this abundance of scollies? I don't, how are they going to fill the roster? Oh, my God. <laughs> Give this staff five or six scollies. It's over. They're making <laughs> moves, dude. All right. I'm trying to find this week zero schedule for us. Is this Big 12 transition for 2024? Yes. At the very earliest, right? The Pac-12 doesn't have a deal past this season. I know, but like if this transition were announced, say, a month into the 23 season. Right. Isn't 24 even a smidge too soon? Like, well, very next year, that's it? Also, like, man, the, the Pac-12, like, just... I mean... It's uh, done. Uh, yeah, it's like... Goodbye. It's the Nazis fleeing Hitler's lair. <laughs> like, it's over. It's yeah. a wrap. Like, let's get it done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, BYU accepted BYU, UCF, and Houston and Cincinnati accepted their Big Twelve invite mid May. So okay. no, I mean they're moving quickly. Yeah, the beauty is the Big Twelve has that deal set up where they can expand and new members get right, the same right, right. TV rev. So on their end, it's super seamless. And I guess well, it all can, if the Pac twelve literally doesn't have a TV contract that holds its members in place as soon as 24, then existing members can do whatever they want. They already kind of are. <laughs> they, they sure are. Okay, so sorry. Thank you for talking that through. <laughs> Definitely 2024. Great question. Thank you. Angela, Jake, and Dre, who's the third guy at pac Media Day now? Should Travis Shane Cokes? Okay, so um, in the email I got about pac Media Day, it said two players. Yeah. Not three. So I think it's Travis and Shador. Now, it's media stuff. Do you think it's Travis? Do you think they might not opt for someone more like a Shane Cox? Shane Cox would be probably the next guy up for me. Jimmy would be a good one, too. Mm -hmm. um, Alton would be fun. I don't know if he's... Totally, totally. But, I mean, clearly this staff, like, you got to earn everything you get. Right. And I bet you they will treat um, Pac-12 media appearances the same exact way. So this is from the press release I got. Um, one day event will again feature all 12 head coaches and two student athletes from each university. So it's only two. And usually it's a classic offense defense. Right, yeah. And yeah, if you've got a good quarterback, you can pencil him in for sure. Yep. Eric's asking what would mean more, a Nuggets NBA title or a Colorado National Championship? Man... It's, I mean, there's you already been answer. a buff snatty. Exactly. Know? That's the thing. Um, the Nuggets are entering another, or a golden era that many of us thought could never be possible. Now, after the last 20 years, a lot that once was possible has felt quote, very less possible um, in Buff's world. And that would make, that would make, 
even just being in that natty conversation again, really special, really special. Yep. Basically my answer. I mean, see, of course already has one, but given how the last 20, 25 years have gone, it's, it would mean a hell of a lot. If CU got back there, be incredible. But the Nuggets are doing something very, very special right now. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Why not both, Jared says. You know what, Why Jared? Not both indeed, Jared. Bell says we can have both as well. That's the thing. As sports fans, we're not wired to be satiated after one championship. Right. No one's ever seen their team win and been like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm good for the rest of my life. We just want more. We want that next four star. We want that next draft pick to hit. Yep. We want that next star free agent. We're just like sickos, man. We're addicted to like the wins and following our teams and being invested in it. And it is the best. It is the best to be a sports. Fan. I thought after the 2015 Super Bowl, I could die happy. Of course. Of Lasted course. like a month. <laughs> of course. Uh, Wayne, any word on if uh, Savion sighting was confirmed by anyone at the school? We talked about this earlier in the show. Um, I don't have anything concrete. I'm not reporting anything, but um, I'm more optimistic than I was yesterday. I'll say that. Beautiful. Love that for us. Anything else? That's it. That's it. Appreciate the chat. Felt yeah. lots of love today. Thank you, guys. Good Always show, Always appreciate it. That was fun. Always a blast, man. Always a blast. Anytime. Yep. Uh, Got something quick. special cooking for tomorrow? Do we? Oh, oh, oh. I figured <laughs> I'd set you up. You scared up, me. Uh, <laughs> Did I forget about something? <laughs> of no, course you, we have something special. We have gonna, another show coming up. I was going to say, I thought you had someone other than me on the show. but Oh, that's that right. One, that I would make forget. it special. Hey, <laughs> I I wanna, you know, like, I'm not going to infringe on your bit. I'm just trying <laughs> to give nice transitions on a pod you, you can take leave do whatever feels it's been good a very you, busy you know? last two days for me uh nikki edwards will be back on the show tomorrow another great one yep another great one uh real quick week zero navy and notre dame in dublin okay Oof. okay those dublin games they, they hit different <laughs> they hit different all right how about hawaii at vanderbilt does that get you fired up oh now that's my kind of football right there yeah on the island no, in Tennessee. Ah, That's damn. a hell of a trip damn. for that Hawaii team. That is a wild trip. No kidding. Nash um, Vegas, though, you know, it's a hot stop. And then, of course, Jackson State plays South Carolina State week zero. In Atlanta. Oh, my gosh. Probably at Mercedes-Benz. I in think Atlanta, so. Yeah. I think so. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so amazing. We'll be watching that. That's a primetime game, 730 yeah. ABC. Wow, what yeah. a blast. That's incredible. Is that it? Uh, there's a bunch Notable more. Notable ones, yeah. Yeah, I mean, does Fordham U Albany get you fired up? No, it doesn't. It does not. Change. What about UTEP Jacksonville State? A little more. A little more. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. We do have San Jose State at USC at 8 p.m. on the Pac-12 network, week zero. See so much Caleb. Yeah, that'd be fun. It that'd will be fun. fun. I can't See how wait. the Trojans look this year. Thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, today we'll be back tomorrow. Let's go, Buffs. Let's go, Buffs, baby.